Hey, this is Steve Reads a Comic. I am your host, not Steve. My name is Sean. <laughs> uh, with still, me is Steve. Hello, Steve. You're still a host. Hey, how's I'm it the going? host. I'm the moderator. I'm the, I don't know, I'm the curator. <laughs> Whatever. What's up, Rob? Hey, what's going on? I'm just uh, a guy. <laughs> I don't do anything. <laughs> Rob's a homeless man, we found. <laughs> this is his big break. This is his opportunity. He's the yeah, guy, on, guy that, on the couch. That, that he doesn't want. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'd rather be homeless. <laughs> but we ho- we hooked him up with this nice garage. Um, so he's doing better. Hey, do you think uh, people with back the blue stickers on their car, do you think they get pulled over less? Mm, no. I don't know. Maybe. Depends on what they're doing. I don't know. I don't Is think he- anybody gets pulled over in Memphis because there's no cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen, I see people get pulled over. I was just wondering if, like, you're a cop and you pulled up behind someone, you're like, nah. Like, right. are you like maybe you're going to run their plates and you're like, nah, I'm not. Gonna I feel it. like they run their plates 100 percent of the time, and if they're clean, they maybe they let them go. I don't know. Mm. I just, it used to be that little FOP sticker, you know, and people would put that FOP sticker. That used to be the thing. Yeah. Um. So back the blue. That's something to consider. I really hate that whole idea, though. That just the you know, I back the blue and then buying, you know, shirts and flags and stickers and all that, because guess what? We all back the blue because if you pay taxes, you are backing the fucking blue. Like, that's what they don't understand. Like, oh, you just backing criminals. It's like, no, we don't want cops murdering people over minor infractions is all. Cops don't need any backing. They have a lot of backing. They have so much backing. They have all I the backing. Him, I backed them by raising my property tax. Right. So, by, uh, yeah, we, by a quarter of a percent or half. I don't remember what right. it was. But I was like, yeah, fuck, pay those guys. I don't want the fucking job for what they're getting paid. So <laughs> please does, hire some people. Does, so flee, the blue. does fleeing the scene in an accident, does that back them? Because I've done that. <laughs> You've done that several times. <laughs> well, uh, and that's, you know what, though? I, I like to see that because, you know, I, I don't want cops just sitting around being lazy. You know, give them something to do. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Yeah, I got them to chase to me for a while. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you're the only person I know that's fleed several scenes. And somehow uh, you keep calling me to help you <laughs> out. Steve, uh, you are not the only person I know who's, who's fled from the cops. They'll <laughs> never take me not. alive, copper. I'm calling my brother. Hold on. Uh, okay. So just, We're just gonna to see what Rob has to say about this. Just to clarify, there nobody was in danger or nobody was hurt or right, anything man, like it's that. It's not like I yeah. left. It's not like right. I hit, hit and run. Right. Right. No, there was no. No the, bystander. The accident was me involved in the accident, not anybody yes, else. Yes, that is but, true. <clears throat> and, and technically, the one wasn't your fault. Yeah, neither one of them are my fault. I don't make mistakes. No, the the second one was definitely your fault. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was the rain. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I so told you. What, now, what I'm trying to get at is, should I get a back the blue sticker or not? Give it a shot. Tell us your results. Why we'll wouldn't go... you? Who cares? Do go... you back to police? Uh, I mean, yeah. n- not really. <laughs> well, then don't you get do. a No, you do. Every every paycheck, you're backing the police. No, I mean, I don't hate the police, <laughs> but I'm not like... Uh, I get it. I'm paying taxes. I get it. But like, I'm Yeah, not... you back the blue. I'm like, so you hey, don't need what, a sticker. whatever. I mean, I like co- cops are good. I think they're necessary. All that the ones true. I've met. I believe man. that, too. I've ne- All the ones in Memphis that I've dealt with have been really cool. Not, now, not Collierville and other like Germantown, they just been dicks. And Bartlett, all the, Bartlett, all the cops I knew in Akron were very cool. Yeah, it's like Outside the big of Akron. Yeah, yeah, the same thing that that's around here. These little cities, man, they got yeah. like short man syndrome. Man, they're just yep. like I have power. Oh, speaking of power, we're doing He Man. Power. Yes. Uh, I'm not ready to discuss He Man yet. No, that's fine. That was, just... a, that was a great segue, though. You that know what we're going to discuss? Rob and I and our families went to the drive in this uh, past oh, yeah? week. And we saw, well, we were going to see a double header. We was Blue Beetle and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. And we ended up leaving after the first one. My wife was tired and 
I was upset. I wanted to stay, but what are you going to do? I what offered. Was the... I offered to keep the kids, but I the asked. Kids didn't I... make a decision, or you couldn't make a decision for them. No, I looked at Brooklyn. I said, "Do you want to stay?" She said she didn't know. I said, "Well, I want to stay." And then, and then everybody was upset, and I was like, "All right, let's just go." And then Molly said, "We're leaving," so I was like, "Okay." Fine. That's because it took 10 minutes for you guys to decide. We're just like, Jesus Okay, Christ. well, I'm trying to. I was the only one that wanted to stay, apparently. I'm trying to right. force somebody to come with me. I to stay, but that's fine. But. I think Brooklyn did, but whatever. So anyway, Ooh. we ended up seeing Blue Beetle. And How was that? It was all right. I it need all right. <laughs> it looked perfectly all right. I watched, <laughs> it, on, I, I watched it on the drive-in. I, I mean, it was hard to get a bearing. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I need to see it again with good sound. Good Between picture. the guy running his car 24 7, <laughs> the other guy smoking, what, what kind of weed is that? The sm- skunk weed. Skunk and weed. between all that, it was, it's hard to, hard to focus on the movie. Well, you could turn off your car and use the battery like I did, and then it died. So. That's, <laughs> that's why I brought my little jumper pack for you. I was reading, they're like, uh, you might make it through a movie on the auxiliary power or whatever. And I was you like, did not. Well, I wasn't going to turn it on, but all I had was this like handheld FM transistor radio, you know? Oh, they still have those? I thought they did like the broadcast where they broadcast no, no, to no, your no. radio. No, 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 I brought it. I brought it. They do. They oh. broadcast to your radio. But we were sitting outside the car. Oh, and okay. That that thing just it wasn't good enough. So I ended, I was like, fuck it, dude. I just turned on the car, rolled down the windows, and cranked the stereo, you know? Yeah. And uh yeah, the car didn't make it through. So but Rob <laughs> Rob said he had a jumper, so I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I got like a little you don't have to get the cables out, it's like a little battery jumper. Oh okay. a portable jumper. It's awesome. I've got my money out of that. It was fun, dude. Like we we went like Rob brought like a portable table, you know, and I, I went and got pizza and we set up the pizza there and we had our chairs out in front of our cars and dude, it was like, really cool. Like and, and, catch. Yeah, it was fun until the movie started. Then you're like, oh my god, this picture and sound is horrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I did, I I did enjoy the movie. Like I I re- I enjoyed it. It was like a fun family film. Yeah, I, la- I laughed more than I thought I was going to, which surprised me. I-, I laughed quite a bit in this in this show. But, you know, like the subtle music cues you get that that are supposed to like uh, force emotion on you, you know, to get you more yeah. invested in the movie like that part of the sound. I couldn't hear, you know, that 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 build up of, of, of dr- dramatic music and stuff. And it yeah. was. It, that was missing. So like, I really want to watch this again with good picture, and good sound to see. Like, I think I would have liked it even more. If, if, uh. But overall, it, I mean, it was good. What It was good, right, Rob? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think they did a great job with the suit and everything. Yeah. The suit I mean, looks it, cool from the trailer. Yeah. I, you know, I know it. I know him not. Well, we did read a comic, but I knew the Blue Beetle. My first introduction was through animation the DC animation. So, right. Um, they did a really good job of, you know, he's kind of like green lantern with a cool suit. You know, he's like, this is what green lantern was supposed to be instead of just making a big fist. You know what I mean? (laughs) So the fight scenes were decent. I think the, the family stuff, you know, it was excessive. It was a bit much, but you know, there, there, there was some good comedy in that. Um, and then, Grandma, and then Grandma, oh my God, Susan Nana. Sarandon. You know who's that? Act Morgan Elsbeth. Who's the actress that plays her? I don't know. You know how she? You said she's like over the top villainous. You know? Yeah. Th- that was the same way in this movie. Susan Sarandon was like, wow. "You are way too evil for this. Like no one, <laughs> no one is this ridiculously evil." But I mean, overall, I, I had a fun time. The kids really liked it. You I'll know. tell you what, at the drive-in, Susan Sarandon looks like she's only like 45 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, she yeah. looked really good. Yeah, because there's holes in the screen. <laughs> right, right, because it's, it's, it's like 240p I don't know if she's had work done or if it screen. was watching it at the drive-in. But <laughs> she looks like she did 30 years ago, 20 years ago. There's a big branch yep. that was coming over on the top left-hand corner of the screen, you know? We looked at the other screens and there were just giant holes in them. Like you could see the sun coming through the other side right before the sunset. We were just, wow. yeah. Wow. It was, it was definitely, dude, I, I don't think I've been to the, 
drive-ins since I was like eight, you know. So it was right. a fun fun experience, and the kids did enjoy it, you know. It, it was more fun with Steve's kids because they're smaller. And so, like, Molly and Aiden and I went, and but it was hot as balls. And it's just way too hot in Memphis. Uh, when we went this weekend, it was it was there was a nice breeze. Mosquitoes weren't bad, and it wasn't super super hot. But dude, in the summer, you can just keep your driving. I ain't I don't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I was having fun like at the driving until the movie started. <laughs> well, you, you, you <laughs> definitely, like, I started getting get bit by mosquitoes. Yeah. Well, I, I have Ninja Turtles on my in my voodoo, so if you want to watch Ninja that's what, Turtles, it's, that's what it's I, available. Well, the kids had already seen it. I was because Rob and Molly hadn't seen it, so I wanted to stay for yeah. them. But uh, honestly, Chris, I didn't care. Yeah, everybody. You know, I was, say I don't care. I don't care, dude. I told the kids before we left. I was like, you know, we're it, we're going to see a doubleheader. It's not going to be over till midnight. So if you got to go to sleep, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yeah. But it wasn't the kids that, like, Dominic was kind of bitching, but it was more my wife. She's like, I just want to go, you know? And I'm like, yeah. dude, come on. Like, dude, if the kids are tired, let them fall the fuck asleep. If you're tired, fall the fuck asleep. Go in the car, yeah. you know? Right. Like, Well, that's what Molly was going to do. Yeah, you know? But they didn't want to go, so I was like, all right, it's cool. I gave I, I gave Kristen the cold shoulder on the way home. It's all right. <laughs> I bet she noticed. I gave her the silent <laughs> treatment. I was like, take that. <laughs> <laughs> she's like thank god he shut the fuck up yeah she don't she don't care she's she's like i won <laughs> all right. All right. Give a shit. and then like i i did remember you had it on voodoo so i was like well rob you can watch it on his voodoo i i really didn't care i you should you should watch i it did on i did because i loved it i wanted to see it again and i wanted to see it with yeah. you you know because i want to see your reaction but yeah it was it was a pretty cool experience i don't Part. i think we took the kids I, I might be. I wonder if I'm making this up. I I think we took them one time to a drive-in movie, but I really don't. I don't remember. Um, my last actual memory that I know when I was at one was when uh, it was a double feature. It, I guess it's always a double feature. But um, <laughs> and I forget what the other. There was two movies. And I think I fell asleep during the first one. The first one was U five seven one. Yeah, remember that movie? Yeah, yeah, the submarine movie. <laughs> yeah, that's, and it might have been like U five seven one Pearl Harbor double feature. I don't know what it was, but I fell asleep watching U five seven one. I was with some friends, and I just passed out. <laughs> I'm sure I was oh. under the influence of some things. Come on, shut up! It's that part of shut the up. podcast. Uh, yeah, I definitely I would go again, just not to a movie I haven't seen. You know, if it's something I've right. already seen, yeah. You need something you don't need to pay attention to, basically. Yeah, and an edible would be nice too. Right. All right, it's enough, Crowley. Why don't you go over there and get some of that skunk weed that dude was smoking? Because it, because <laughs> it was shitty weed. <laughs> <laughs> skunk weed could be good weed. <laughs> um. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's get to this. Is what I'm actually. I'm. I'm almost more excited to talk about this than He Man, and that is Ahsoka. Did everybody <laughs> watch Ahsoka from yesterday or today? I did. Of course, so come on, man. <laughs> I uh, all right. So let's let's start with the the positives. I'm gonna start with the positives here. <laughs> we got some lightsaber fights. I always like lightsaber fights, even if they're not the best lightsaber fights. Ahsoka pulling off some really stupid moves. Did you see when she jumped off that wall for some reason? She like <laughs> ran. She turned her back on that dude to jump off a wall. I was like, wow, that's stupid. And then there were just all these moments I couldn't help but notice when they were distracted. They're both looking at somebody and nobody was attacking the other one while they were distracted. They're just like, oh, wait, hold on a minute. Like, no, that's when you strike. That's when you fucking strike. These um, lightsaber battles were way too fucking slow. That was that they was were, they were not they were not great. They were TV budget <laughs> level. Yeah, that was something These I noticed right filmed off filmed in like the same day. <laughs> right. As like, come on, man. Who, we, who's the guy, Wu Ping or whatever, with the Matrix? What was that guy's yeah, name? Yeah, Wu Ping. Yep. Yeah, we need somebody like him in this stuff. Because, man, need, I was Wu just Ping. like, I was like, oh, yawn. Let's hurry yeah. it up, man. And it just sucks, too, because you know there's not going to be any, you know nobody of import is going to die. They killed off that Maroc dude. Remember, I was like, who? who's this guy? Fucking nobody. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what was green, he? He's, he's made out of green fucking 
I, lo- I, I don't I, fucking know. I looked it up. He's a knight brother. He was created. Oh, okay. Well, I he saw was... that green come out of him, so I knew he was had something to do with the Knight Sisters. Yeah. Uh... Mor- Morgan created that guy to do his bidding, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. Well, I just I knew it had something I didn't to do with the care. Knight Sisters. But yeah, so he was off, and I was just like, "Well, that's disappointing." I cared about um, that guy. I liked that guy. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I like that guy. He looked cool. I, I, yeah, I didn't want him to go. You know, he looked like a character from Dark Souls. He looked fucking cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the rest of the fights were just pointless. Um, yeah, you know, you know, Sabine's not gonna succumb right. to that battle right. because we just watched her recovering from the last right. episode. You know, so that was a that was a mistake. I really do like this Balin guy, though. I just I like. And it's a shame that he's dead. Uh, the yeah. actor Ray Ray Wise, I think is his Ray name. Ray Stevenson. Stevenson. Thank you. I don't, who's Ray Ray Wise? That's the guy who played my favorite Martian. Anyway, um, <laughs> I said I'm going. Wait, I back. accidentally said Ray Park last episode. Wait, no, I, that's still not right. Ray Wise is the guy. He was in Twin Peaks. He was in RoboCop. Don't go down this rabbit hole. Stop <laughs> I gotta, right I gotta now. Figure it out. I got to figure it out. Ray Wise is somebody else. I think. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Yeah, good point, Rob. Uh, so Ray Stevenson, the ba- Balin skull. Ray Finkel? God damn it. Lace Finkel, it Finkel is Einhorn. <laughs> and there we go. All right. Sorry. Um, sorry. But, uh, I just, I like the way he plays the character. You know, he's not doing the over the top evil guy thing. Uh, you know, he, he kept his word to Sabine. Sabine. Did- so what the fuck is Sabine? She's confusing me. Like what, what is going on? With yeah, her character. I don't What know. happened to her character since Rebels? And, and dude, she wouldn't have lasted three minutes in that lightsaber duel. We already right. saw what would happen. At least right. she used uh, her guns and, you know, yeah. her, her, yeah. her uh, bracelet, whatever. Yeah, yeah her gauntlets. But yeah, that, even then, cool. I mean, when she picked up the lightsaber and they're dueling, I'm like, no, come on. Yeah, it's, it's, also- it's what they call, uh, I think they call it like story armor. That's the whole problem I have with this is yeah. what they're doing yeah. with Sabine. I just let her be a freaking Mandalorian, man. Right. I don't want she her to be a Jedi. This, she was not inept. She was very competent yes, in, in Rebels. Thank you. I, I and confident. Very confident. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, Ahsoka falls. We know she's not dead, right? Obviously, they're not going to kill Ahsoka four episodes into this series called Ahsoka. <laughs> um, but she's uh, in some state. Even... And, oh, boy. And what do they do? They pull what they always pull, which is got to bring another bring character. legacy character. Legacy another character time. Man. Everybody get excited. Oh, my God. It's fucking Anakin. Uh, I think. Uh, I don't know, because that, that dude looked terrible. Um, <laughs> dude, I don't even know if that was a de-aged. I was like, oh, I man, really? I was like, come on. Hey, do people get excited over that? I'm like, really? I was like. No, we're not, that's we're what, done telling that story. Let's go. This that's is what Star Wars is becoming. It is becoming a series now where people clap when that guy shows up. When Luke <laughs> Wait, shows so, up or so when, this is you know after I mean? the fall of the Empire. So he's yes. dead now. He's dead. So is that supposed to be his Force ghost, or is yeah. that? T- that's my take on it. Is because of the you know at the but she's in the the in between worlds, like in Rebels. Right. So yeah. anybody yeah. that doesn't see Rebels, I don't. See how they know what the fuck is going on. Oh yeah, on. If they haven't seen Rebels. They don't. They don't know what the fuck's because happening. Because it, it looked just like the in between world, right? And yeah, and he thing. shows up, calls her snips. And meanwhile, dude, I, you know what I can't stand? Is I, after the first two episodes, I I made the joke that Ahsoka just crosses her arms and talks. And now it literally every episode she crosses her arms and <laughs> starts talking slowly in a monotone voice. I'm like, oh my god. They're, they're going to keep doing this. She just crosses her arms. And then she's like, but she started off. Like she, she started off uncrossed and then she went to it. I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> why'd you like, do that? Why is that the move? What is happening? <laughs> well, then the robot Does, Does says, Dawson not know what to do with her arms. Like what, what is going on? Robot like, says pockets. The robot says stay together. And then they separate immediately. As soon as they of start. Course. I was like, eh. yeah, it's like, of course. <laughs> they, 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 they got to pick up the tempo on these lightsaber scenes. They got to be faster. They got to be more intriguing. Like I was just bored to death watching, and there was a lot of them too. You know, I was yeah. I was happy. Like I was like, wow, I'm getting all this action, but the action sucks. It sucks, and it's of no import. And 
here's the thing. I, I, I'm just looking at the story overall. This We're four episodes in. This is an eight-episode series. We have made almost zero story progress since episode one. You know what I mean? Like, almost nothing has happened in these four episodes that affect the actual plot, right? They got right. the map. That's about it. They well, have I, the map. They built the thing to use I, the map. That's all I, that's happened in four episodes. I thought Sabine and Ahsoka were growing together. And then at the end of it, I'm like, well, fuck, that's not happening. Yeah. Unless this was all planned. Like, Ahsoka's like, I'm going to go over the edge. You get captured. That way you're on the <laughs> That way, at least you're on the ship, you know, and we'll know, you know, at least somebody will be there. That's the only thing I right. can think of, you know. Yeah, and it, can I trust you to make the right decision? No, you can't trust her to make it. She's going after Ezra, no matter yeah. what. I'm yeah. like, Jesus Christ, well, I'm that, not force sensitive, and I know what's going to happen in the future on that one. Well, that's what I'm thinking. It, was that supposed to be the right decision that Ahsoka wanted? I I don't know. I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know what they're doing. And I don't want to see Hera's kid either. Like, get that fucking kid out of here. I don't give a fuck. Why is he on the right. ship with her? Like, should right. he be doing homework or something? Somewhere, right. somewhere like, safe? Like, it's weird to bring your kid to work when your your work is uh, being a terrorist, basically. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and when are we going to see the ghost? I want to see the ghost. Did the ghost get blown up in Rebels? What happened? I thought she was in the ghost, wasn't she? Oh, was that the ghost? I thought that it was looked like the ghost. ghost to me. Oh, that was a ghost. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, just, that I guess like the ghost to me. I yeah. guess I had something else in mind. Yeah, because she had the detachment ship in the right. earlier uh, episode. That was yeah, the, yeah, the, ghost. the phantom. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that was the ghost. No, that, I'm pretty sure that was the that ghost. Was, the phantom was the one that was blown up, I think. And then that's phantom two or something. I don't know. Mm. I well, shit, quote. I forgot. Don't, do what... not do not quote me on that because I am so losing interest. In fact, I forgot it was on last night. <laughs> I had to watch it when I, I got I home. forgot what the ghost looked like, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here's the thing. I I think now four episodes in and I hope I'm wrong. I think <coughs> they're they're just heading towards like Thrawn being revealed in the last episode. Like what like they're building they did up in to. Jedi are the first. What they're building up to is, yeah. is Thrawn being the villain in the next in the big movie, right? That's supposed to tie all the all these shows together. I don't think he's going to be like the big player in this, and I could be wrong. You know, they, they could prove me wrong in the next episode. But at the pace they're going, unless unless they quadruple the pacing of this show, they're not going to find Ezra and Thrawn until like episode seven and eight, basically. From what I, I guarantee can tell. it, you might you know he might not take it all the way to episode eight to reveal them like they did with fucking Luke Skywalker. But it's going to end on a fucking cliffhanger. I can tell you that because there ain't no way they can tell a whole story. They ain't even telling a, an eighth of a story so far. And we're what, four episodes in? Jesus. Yeah. Well, you guys were saying that last week before we even saw this episode. I know, so. but it's getting worse. <laughs> And I, dude, it was like I predicted though too. Last week I was like, "Oh, great, they're gonna be stuck on this planet fighting for this whole episode." And lo and behold, like, God damn it, this is, ugh, they're just dragging this shit out. It's so deep. Well, they did jump to hyperspace. We have that. They finally did. They finally. But ugh. we got a lot more time with the map again. Got to get the map time. Yeah, <laughs> got to see that map. map so glad when he stabbed it with that lightsaber, I was like, "Thank fucking God!" I know, I'm so that's... tired of this fucking map. Like, Good <laughs> fucking lord, get rid of this fucking map. I don't care about this goddamn map. <laughs> Four episodes uh... of this map. Fuck. <laughs> get to the goddamn point. Next episode. I mean, we had the Omnicroms and or whatever they were called in Rebels, but it was just it wasn't like a whole episode built around that. It was like they. They bring it in every once in a while, you know, or go back to it or, you know, then it leads them there. And, you know what I mean? And it did. Oh God. Th this I, next episode, they'll be like, this leads to Thrawn and it leads to another map room. <laughs> <laughs> By Thrawn, we mean the map of Thrawn. <laughs> it, it's, a blue, uh, it's a blue map. <laughs> I mean, what, what are Ezra uh, and Thrawn doing? Are they like. <laughs> I thought about, I picture them, uh, Playing the card games, <laughs> yeah, and stuff. Like, yeah. Are they on a, I'm just curious where they go with this because Is, you remember. I'm actually, you know what I'm picturing? I'm actually picturing uh, Avengers when Nebula and Tony Stark are hanging out. That's yeah, they, that's yeah. Thrawn and Ezra right now. You know, I, I took it even further back. That movie where the 
was it Kurt Russell? No, it was Jeff Bridges. What was that movie with the alien played by Louis Gossett? And I think oh, it was Alien Z- Nation. No, no, no. It was where oh. they were stuck on a planet. It was an alien and a human. And then they became mine. And in me mine, I think that was it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Where Jesus, where the hell did you guys pull that out? Of oh man, he, Sean knows he's seen it. I've never seen it. Oh my just, god, but I'm you aware of it. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a decent movie. One of those, it, I remember when they were advertising it, like when it was on TV. I wanted to watch it. That was a hundred years ago, and I never watched it. Though. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They're they're gonna be stuck on a planet and become good friends. I picture oh, yeah. Ezra and Thrawn on a bicycle built for two. There you go. <laughs> You know yeah, what? Know. Whatever they do, I'm probably not gonna like it. I don't. I am so. You know what jay- though? Even even with all my complaints, I still rate this better than Obi Wan and Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still enjoying it more yeah. than those two shows. I did like. Uh, I did. I like- think I had higher expectations for this one because it was Dave Filoni. Well, it was basically Rebels, you know. Yeah. But man, just. I had higher Uh, expectations because of this character. Like everybody fucking loves Ahsoka. Yeah, I I I liked uh, when she'd put her leg on the wall to support the incoming attack. That was cool. That was fine. Yeah, but there was a point I don't know, but where she jumped off the wall, like she ran over to it, and then you know she turned her back on him to run over, and then do this weak ass half ass jump. Was like, what was the point of this? (laughs) Why would you do that? (laughs) <laughs> you, that did nothing that did ex- ex- except exposure back to your enemy that, you that's know, all that did when they were doing the standoff you know the the old western you know where they they're both staring at each other and walking around uh-huh. like it yeah. took forever to get engaged i was like I, I was waiting for the the real close-up of the face or something you know like oh, from, like the uh, kill bill style yeah <laughs> like <laughs> the zoom in and then the action starts you know and no, then you no, zoom in to, on Balin, and they have to zoom in on their hand and, and, going for the lightsaber as well yeah like that force excitement you know that and yeah. it, it probably would have worked because it would have been better than what i watched but did you guys notice yeah. like in a couple of the fight scenes ahsoka didn't even get out her secondary lightsaber she didn't like, at all i'm like what would it all yeah, but why? Why would why would she I, want to? I I assume it's because she was considering her adversary, and I think she was considering their fight style, and that one yeah. lightsaber would like a different fight style would would be better. Was that's how I looked at it? Is if you're a seasoned sword fighter, you know you and you know this person's style, maybe so a different style would when be. When you have fitting. the spinny lightsaber coming at you, you want one blade instead of two. I, 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 I don't know. I don't I'm think... not a swordsman. <laughs> I don't okay. know. When she fought that Merrick, I think she's like, there ain't no way this guy's going to beat me. I still think with a double bladed lightsaber is a huge liability. Like when you think about how much you have to move your body to avoid hurting yeah. yourself. Yeah. To you to point it, you know, it's a good defensive weapon. I don't think it's a, a great offensive weapon, though, uh, because, again, the you have to Kylo have to Ren's move a lot. saber makes more sense because. Yeah. He didn't lose a hand because he had those two little, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. The two little yeah, juts coming out. Guard, yeah. And, you know, all the other ones, you know, that's where they lost the hand, you know, because they came down on it. That stopped, yeah. you know, the the Kylo Ren one makes sense because right. it's not impeding you at all, you know? Yeah. I, I can see if well, you're using one of those fuck off giant King Arthur fucking blades, but a lightsaber, that ain't going to weigh that much. Like, you can use both hands. It's like you don't um, need two hands on one fucking lightsaber. That that being said, I still like the double bladed lightsaber. It looked cool. It always looks cool. I'm fine with it. I'm just you know trying to think about it realistically. It's different than a, a bow staff. You know, like Donatello, he can grip that anywhere. He can swing it like a bat. He can yeah. hold it in the middle. You can only hold that lightsaber in the middle. <laughs> you know, like well, you only have <laughs> Darth Maul's was pretty wide. I guess the Inquisitors yeah, but are still, wide it's just, too. But yeah. or, or if you're Sabine, you can hold it in your kidney too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I don't need this liver. It's a nonsense. little bit above. It was right above the kidney. Okay. <laughs> they were and doing I was that. Just about to schedule my appendectomy. <laughs> Thank you very much. They were doing that online, Rob. Uh, they were uh, they were showing stills of of Qui Gon and Sabine. Yeah, Qui Gon got it right in the middle. Yeah, those are all over the way. To... Ultimately, that all gets nullified by the fact that. It's a fucking Darth lightsaber. Darth Ball got cut in half and he came back. So yeah. that didn't help <laughs> even my own argument. But if Qui-Gon died, went out like a bitch, 
Darth Ball got cut in half, fell to oblivion from what we could tell. He was fine. So there's there's definitely no consistency there. It's uh, it's cool. There were, it's, there were foam there were foam padding down there at the bottom. <laughs> he landed on a trampoline. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, even though I was one of the same people to make that gripe, uh, I mostly made that gripe because it just didn't it just didn't make sense because how quickly she recovered uh, is is where I had the issue. It's, like, it's okay, thirty maybe she years can technology, bro. Come on, medical's yep, come whatever. a long way. Yeah, Rob, <laughs> Rob told you last last time we talked about this, Sean. So fair enough. Um, it's a fair <laughs> argument. I I just want Me- I medicine want, has come a long way. Dude, I, I want Kanan back, dude. I want Kana. I want Herod. Hera. Dude, how, dude would I you just, not? Here's right? the thing. So I was thinking yeah. about this. Freddie Prinze Jr. voiced Kanan, right? He's an actor. He's a live action actor. I would have thought it would have been so much cooler to see him than fucking Anakin. So I, I, I would rather see a Force Ghost of Kanan. Yeah, I'm tired of seeing it. I don't like yeah. Anakin. I don't like <laughs> all, all right. my love to George Lucas. His per, his writing and then the portrayal of Anakin made me almost hate Darth Vader. I was like, this is a whiny bitch. I fucking hate this dude. I don't like Anakin. He now it was redeemed on the Clone Wars. Yes. Thank he you. He was better on the Clone Wars. Yes. Uh but in the movies though, in the first, you know, or at least the second and third movie when Hayden Christensen played him, god damn I hated that character. Like there was I just I don't like Anakin. I don't like him. But yeah in Clone Wars he he was much better. Um I can't believe he yeah, just. I would much. I, I'd as a Rebels fan, I, seeing Kanan, what that would have given me the you know stand up and clap in the movie theater idiot act, you know I, that that would have grabbed me way more than seeing fucking Anakin. Like stop yeah. milking these same these same like four characters or whatever. Right and like and like Ahsoka knows who Kanan is, you know, like right that would have worked. That's a, uh. you brought back Luke. <laughs> that was fucking spectacular. Could have done without it. But it was awesome. But and then, then they brought, brought him back, back again and diminished time. it. <laughs> not, not necessary. Not ne- right. No, shouldn't have right. done it again. But, but Luke Skywalker and like you said, Anakin, man, them are two different tiers. Like yeah. bring him back, Luke. One time, young is awesome. Right. But like, yeah, I would much rather see Kanan. So I was it, thinking that too. Is Anakin just going to give Ahsoka no, a pep, uh, pep talk? Who something? knows? Who cares? Oh, you know what? I don't fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't care. Like, I don't know. Maybe I should care. Maybe it's going to be some really cool conversation. But Darth Vader's arc is done. You know, like, I don't know. It's just done. Let it be done. Well, I mean, I <laughs> now that you say that. <sighs> Ahsoka with Rebels was torn over Anakin and, you know, the guilt or whatever. But. Yeah, but even then, ah, fuck it. Just I just don't it. care about yeah. any, like. Well, I don't maybe care. if they find some closure between each other, maybe uh, Ahsoka will be less drab and more peppy. No, I don't. See I that hate. Happening. I did see her smile <laughs> and like do a little chortle or giggle or something in this last episode. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! Ahsoka has more than one side. Right. Yeah, she's she's a cardboard cutout now, and it's a shame because she was. She was great in all the cartoons, man. She was yeah. fucking fantastic in all the cartoons. Ashley Eckstein, we miss you. Yeah, so I mean, there was, there was a lot of her and Anakin, so I guess, I don't know. We'll see next week. Yeah, I'll like, watch it. Dude, I'm going to watch it. I'm still looking forward to it. I am. I'm not dreading it the way I was dreading Boba Fett after two or three episodes where I was like, I got to fucking watch this shit. God damn it. Baff the tank. <laughs> I don't know. I'm starting to kind of dread it, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, because you, you're a big Ahsoka fan. You uh, got you got the toys and whatnot. I'm not, so I'm not as invested. But I would like to see her portrayed better. But uh, it's Dave Filoni's involved. That's what I don't understand. It's Filoni, but it's Filoni. Rosario not a and, bad actor. She can yeah, do. Well. I, I love I, I like her almost Dawson. everything else I've seen her in. I have no issue with. Her. I don't know why they're I, choosing to portray her this way. Yeah, but I think I think it's Dave Filoni with pressure from the whole franchise you know what i mean yeah. it's not him doing his own thing they you need know? to just stop with these shows man just stop with star wars shows 
If they're going to do Star Wars shows, they need to do like lower deck original, type shit. Original shit. I'm curious no. to see what happens with or, or whatever. But no, I don't even want, I'd rather have like a, just lower decks where it's just, you know, I don't want it to be canon. Have you just watched make, that? No, but I, oh. I the vibe of it from what I've seen is, you know, oh, it's, it's kind of silly. Hilarious. Uh, you know, just do something different. Stop making these TV shows that are, you know, hard canon, basically. What's and they're sad not good. Is, it's still canon. Lower but Decks the, is canon, and, oh, okay. but they do it in a fun fucking, they make fun yeah. of themselves, basically. They make fun of Star Trek, while every, it, it's great. I love Lower Decks. I, the new season yeah, I'd comes love, out. I'd love to just follow, weeks. like, a garrison of stormtroopers around. You know, I think that'd be fun, you know, where they're just like, God That's kind of what it is, yeah. <laughs> it's like, why are we wearing this armor? It doesn't seem to protect against anything. <laughs> it's it's so all hot. white. Like, what is happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? The conversations like that. I know that's like real obvious Star Wars humor, but you know what I mean? Just stuff along those lines where it's, you know, a different different point of view. Not everything's all uh, meant to be super serious. And, oh, look, it's Hayden Christensen again. <laughs> I was for- I at, with if you would have told me I would have got that much action, especially lightsaber scenes. I would have been pumped for this episode. Yeah. But they were just boring, man. Somebody needs to die in these lightsaber fights. Uh, you know what I mean? And the the Merrick dude was not the sacrificial lamb that I was looking for. You know, some like somebody, like somebody, one of the characters, not just some mass nobody. Somebody needs to die in these fights. Yeah, and he died quickly. Like Ahsoka was like, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, no, but down like a little bitch. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, Darth Maul against Obi Wan. It was like, what happened? Right, right. <laughs> Like, goddamn, you just upped your game that drastically. <laughs> I guess it makes, uh, she should she should beat him if he's just a manifestation. Like he should go out. Oh, quick. absolutely. I mean, and yeah, Ahsoka's a badass. You know, like, we we know that. Um, so his demise, if anything, took too long. Uh, he probably should have been killed an episode or two ago. But you know, they they need to kill off. They need to kill mm. some people, some actual pe- characters that have faces. Um. All right, they, they so, gotta keep them in the movie coming up. Uh, see, so yeah, Star Wars continues to disappoint, <laughs> unfortunately. And yes, I will keep watching. I don't know what it will take for me uh, to stop watching. I don't know. I'm gonna keep watching. Is you so you see with Marvel what it took? Like Marvel, I could bounce off of that. Uh, I can't do that with Star Wars. I just can't. I don't know. It, it's because I probably just because I've loved it since first time my brain came online and I started developing memories. That's like some of my earliest memories is Star Wars. So uh, I, I can't, I don't know. I just, I can't bring myself to dip out. It's like you guys in the Browns for the Star Wars is my Browns. I just Sunday, Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> this Sunday. So what's the deal? So they're only carrying it on, on YouTube now, or where else can you watch the Browns game? Well, we can only yeah. watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on channel three or whatever it is. All right, for people under the age of fifty, where would you watch? Yeah, Direct TV um, <laughs> no longer has the local contract. television. That's yeah. why, yeah, people don't. I don't have local television. But here's the <laughs> thing: here's the. Do you know that Direct TV is offering a four hundred dollar rebate because you can get YouTube through Direct TV? Okay. So Direct TV is now offering a. If you get Direct TV, is they'll give you a four hundred dollar rebate if you get YouTube. So you can. This is get. not sponsored content, by the way, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, should be. <laughs> and I was uh, like, "Ooh!" And Steve just canceled six, six uh, subscriptions <laughs> to get to get the. No, I was YouTube. trying to get this thousand dollar Neo statue. I was like, "I've got to cut corners somewhere." Netflix Do is it. one of them, and then immediately after I canceled Netflix, <laughs> Sean's like, "Hey, we're gonna watch He Man, which is on Netflix." So I got it back, and guess what? Guess what? I know we're not talking about He Man yet, but I already watched the part two. I totally for it was so not memorable. I forgot I even watched part two. Oof, oof. <laughs> so I, I I reinitiated Netflix for no reason whatsoever. I, I, I offered to give you my uh, my Apple login because I bought the show on my Apple. Uh, yeah, I know it's fine. I mean, like Netflix, I need to have Netflix. That's that's a big one. You know, it is it is a big one. Paramount um, Plus, Showtime. I got rid of those. I was only watching Yellow Jackets on Showtime. Paramount Plus. I was only watching the football games, but now that I got YouTube, I don't need that. So, 
I'm saving some money. I got rid of Audible. Dude, I was paying like $18 a month for Audible. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. I barely even listen to an audio book maybe twice a year now. So yeah. I was like, why do I have this? All right, so let, let, let's do it. Let's get into Masters of the Universe Revelations. Let's do a little history on it before we get into the actual story. So this is uh, the, the main creative behind it is Kevin Smith, from what I understand. I don't know if Mattel approached him. I'm pretty sure they approached him. And the reason I'm pretty sure of that is because Kevin Smith, you, you can verify this. You can I've seen video footage. Uh, he, there was a show called Comic Book Men. Yeah, it's about a comic book shop he owns, and he would be on it sometimes. Um, but there's footage from him on that show talking about how he didn't like He-Man growing up. And I have no issue with that because he was literally 13 years old when this show came out. The show is the, the original show was not aimed at 13 year olds. It was supposedly aimed at five to 10 year olds. I think it was more aimed at five to eight year olds. Uh, I was five. I was prime demographic for this shit. So uh, I, I don't have an issue with him not liking it. what I have an issue with is then he was interviewed like when he took the job. And he's like, yeah, I was, you know, I was too old when it came out. And I almost hate watched it because they never got in any fights and never used their weapons. And I'm like, OK, what? So you you dislike this property. Why did you take this fucking job, you fucking asshole? Uh, because it shows that he doesn't give a shit about this property. But we'll, we'll get into that. Um, I, so have, we write, done, have we done this podcast before? Because like, I watched part two. Like, Have we done this? We did no, it on I've part never, one. I've never, but I never asked you guys to watch it. Okay. Um, no, you asked us. You no, but I mean, us. I didn't. You told us homework. about it, but it wasn't assigned to me. Exactly. I'm it just, wasn't my uh, homework. I'm right. just proud of ourselves because we've done so many episodes. Now I'm starting to forget. So I was like, that's cool. That's not good because you are you have to be my memory. Because I oh, I forget every every week. I'm like, we want to watch the Masters of the Universe movie. And every week you guys are like, no, we've already watched it. Um, <laughs> we're, like, all right, no. we're like, next week, <laughs> Preacher. <laughs> <laughs> have we done any Punisher stuff? Um, so... Uh, All right, so this show, he does this show. Uh, I think he's like a producer, executive producer, did some writing. I think he directed the first episode or whatever. It's a 10 episode series. I was so fucking hyped for this show, dude. So fucking hyped. Because beforehand, I didn't know how he felt about He-Man. Um, and uh, it was great because this show is a sequel to the original series from that ran from 83 to 85 or 82 to 85 or whatever it was, 83 to 85. Um now those shows had zero continuity because it was it was literally cranked out to be syndicated, and play every episode could be played out of order. So there wasn't any true continuity there. It was but, cranked out to sell toys. Well, yeah, and that I mean, and that's why they did that. Um, but they cranked these episodes out too, man. Two sixty-five episode seasons. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of work, really fast. Um, so. There, there were things in the show, though, that they established back then, 40 years ago, where, like, there was... I remember there was an episode where Queen Marlena lets on that she knows Adam is He-Man, and they they play on that. Um, the fact that Tila is the sorceress's daughter, they, you know, that's... You know, they, they, t- they took all this stuff from the original series. There was a series in 2002. It was, it was um, like, one and a half seasons long, basically. It was, it was uh, 39 episodes. And that was more of a remake and it was really good. It was, it was way better. It was aimed at a slightly older audience, but adults could appreciate it. Kind of like, kind of like DC cartoons, you know, (sighs) where it was just slightly more mature, not like dark mature, but more like, you know, the Batman justice league type stuff where kids could enjoy it. Adults could enjoy it. Did not take off. Kids didn't resonate with kids at all, uh, apparently. And um, so unfortunately that was, uh, scrapped or whatever. Did you um, say they but, hint, they hinted at like Tila being daughter of the sorceress? No, no, they they fully reveal it. Okay, in the so he's show. just recapping. But his- in the original show, if I remember correctly, they reveal it to her and then they like wipe her memory, like she doesn't know, or so, I think. In the so they but they did reveal it to her at one point and then she forgets it for whatever reason. But uh, and you know, Man at Arms was like her her dad or adoptive dad. So I I don't remember which was if he was biological or adoptive or anyway none of that matters so this show is coming out on netflix i'm fucking pumped i think the art looks great the trailer looks great everything looks great uh and then the very first episode they kill he-man and i was like that's fine it's a cartoon this is basically a comic book world 
he'll be back in the next episode. No, <laughs> no, he man, he man doesn't really. I mean, you get to see some Adam and stuff, some flashbacks. He doesn't really come back as He Man until the like what ninth episode, tenth episode. Uh, you actually get to see He Man again. So this this show and the original show. I need to stress this: the original show is called He Man and the Masters of the Universe. This series is called Masters of the Universe Revelations. That should have been a warning because he purposely left his name out of it and then used that as an excuse later. It's like, well, it's called Masters of the Universe. Yeah, but the show was called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. He was clearly the star. And also, there was 130 episodes of this show. Other characters had arcs. I mean, they had episodes because you can't do 130 episodes with only He-Man being the star. There were a lot of episodes about Tila, and He-Man was in every single one, however. But they would go off and, you know, show you Tila's story, the sorceress's story. Queen Marlena's origin. Queen Marlena was a human or is a human. She's from, from Earth. Earth. She's from um, Earth. I forgot about they that. Were, they it's revealed a... that on the original show. Yeah. Um, so other characters definitely had stories. Uh, Kevin Smith <coughs> trying to defend his absolutely insane, idiotic, fucking retarded ass decision to focus on Tila. Let's tell Tila's story. Uh blew my fucking mind there's just no reason for it and i think the thing that made me the most angry is the fact that not only did he decide to focus on tila he then turned tila into this narcissistic cunt cunt sore of a person who only gave a shit about herself her best friend just died sacrificed his life so she could live as well as everybody else in eternos and what does she do she gets mad at him. Like, yeah. Wow. There, there you was are a, a fucking bitch. There was a line in the show too. He's like, I died. <laughs> right. They address it a, briefly. Yeah. They address it, but she just continues to fucking rage. Yeah. And she's, she's just like, like who you died? This was a good idea. She was like, you died, but we had to live on or something like that. Right. Like, yeah. You fucking cut. <laughs> and we had to live with it. It was like, excuse me. You know, like <laughs> what the fuck is this? Right. Tila was always a strong character. She was the captain of the guard on the show. She was there shoulder to shoulder with He-Man in every fucking episode. She could hold her own. She was a warrior. There was never any downplaying of her because she was a woman ever that I remember on the original show. And for the, for the fucking eighties, that's really fucking progressive, but that that's just how Queen Marlena was a pilot. She would join them in battle. And this is 1982, 83. Um, so this whole notion that he was doing something, we got to bring the women forward. Here's the other thing. They did a She-Ra revival years ago. She got five fucking seasons. They didn't kill her off and then focus on her dude, Bo. You don't do that. You don't fucking do that with a property. Imagine you sit down to watch a new Superman cartoon. They kill off Superman and you're stuck with Lois Lane. The rest of the show is just about Lois Lane now. Why would you ever fucking do that? That's that's storytelling 101. Like It doesn't even make sense. Um, because you don't like the franchise. He said it from exactly. the beginning. But he won't, he won't admit that now, even though, again, we have this footage. He won't admit that. All right. I when, have rambled on for what feels like forever. W- wait a minute. When he so brought... like it? <laughs> <laughs> wait, I do have good things to say about it. I actually do. What did you uh, say, Steve? When they brought He-Man back finally, did that give you goosebumps or no? When he No. It, when, that, it, when they it was... brought him back as eight man, did, did that give yeah, you see, goosebumps? So no, no. no. I, has... I meant after that. When, not not the prim- I, I know, primordial He-Man. The... I know what you mean. So they did Savage He-Man. Savage He-Man was actually a reference to the comics. He actually looked like that in the little mini comics. So the, uh, the toy line started in 82. The, the show came out in 83. So okay. for like a little over a year, you just had these mini comics that told He-Man's story. And it was a vastly different story from what they did in the animated series. Uh, he was just a barbarian. There was no Prince Adam. Tila was already kind of like a sorceress type character. It was, it was a lot of different stuff. I don't remember all of it. I don't, I don't remember most of it, but I do remember he man just having a loincloth basically at one point before he was given this special magic armor and stuff that you see. It actually makes him he man. <sighs> um, so no, like now it's, well, that's the thing. So let me say the things I did. Yeah, like about you this. kept saying there's no he man. There's a bunch of he man, just not the he man, you know, <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's some fucking crazed fucking gorilla running around. Like, that's, that's not He-Man. Um, what I did like, uh, I thought I thought the art style was great. I thought they did a great job 
uh, taken the toy line as well as the old cartoon to make the the new designs, and they all looked fantastic. I thought the voice cast overall was amazing. Oh man, I don't voice really cast. care for Sarah Michelle Gellar's voice, but I don't dislike her necessarily. And I think a lot of it just had to do with again they had her p- portraying this fucking asshole character they took, they took a character who was a strong female and i hate when they're like oh strong females means a cunty bitch right it's like no you can be a strong female without being a cunt just like you can be a strong male without being an asshole you can do that um so but the cast was great i really liked uh evil lynn uh lena oh thanks that? for mansplaining that to me <laughs> that was one of the lines right um Le- lena heady um, oh, I liked I liked her as Evil Lynn. She she was great as Evil Lynn. Everybody was great uh, as far as Mark Hamill as Skeletor. Um, you know, trying his best not to sound like the Joker, that, but still sound the like the Man Joker. at Arms guy was in. Um, he was the guy. Game of Thrones. From, yes, thank you. Um, Wait, which he, one? Uh, I knew that. What? Which one? From Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. He what was guy? the no. the guy. Uh, it was like the lieutenant of one of the guys. I don't know. He was always on the ship. Oh, what the hell? I don't know, remember. Oh, I know either. who you're talking about. I got you. I got you. Anyway, you... uh, it had a great cast. Animation style looked good. The uh, the character designs looked great. I thought the and the, and the actual fluidity of the animation looked great. Um, the I thought some of the fight scenes were great. We finally got to see He Man swing that fucking sword around, which Skeletor made mention of. Um, there were some really cool scenes, and there were some emotional beats too, like when uh, Prince Adam's dad. Who again? And his dad turned into a total asshole too out of nowhere. Was, Get the fuck out, basically. <laughs> and it was just like, what is happening? Like, why? Why is everybody turning into giant dick bags? Um, and if I see but, any more of my royal guard, you're beheaded. Yeah, it was like Jesus fucking Christ. We did 130 episodes together. What is your problem? Um, but like, he had that big moment where he, you know, he's talking to Savage He Man as Prince. Ad- you know, he reverts him back to Prince Adam and stuff. That was pretty good. Um, uh, the, I don't know what else. Um, well, just the overall feel of it was much more mature. You, you know, like Orko. I did I, like Orko. I did. I like they Roboto. Rede- they did redeemed him at the end instead of yeah. He actually, did something. He, he right. had some cool moments. My boy Ram Man. That's like one of my favorites. He barely oh, showed up. I was up. like, when are we gonna see Ram Man? <laughs> and barely Back showed up. Episode for like he's gonna be in. I saw some footage seconds. of the new season though. He's gonna be in the new. They're doing um, another season. Yeah, it's called Revolution. Um, cause it kind of ended on a cliffhanger with Skeletor and the motherboard. Um, Did it? Was cool. so, and I'll be watching it <laughs> just like star Wars. I'll be here for it. Wait, is end. it from yeah. Kevin Smith again? Unfortunately. Yes. Uh, he claims he has heard, you know, he's heard people who love it, people who hate it. I'm guessing mostly people who hate it and he's heard and he's gonna, you know, supposedly Tweak make it? restitution with us. Um, and I hope so, because I, I do I do genuinely like Kevin Smith. I'm not calling for his head or anything. I just That's a way to get you to watch the next season. <laughs> well, I'm gonna watch it regardless. I'm, He's like, I'm it. just I'm just doing my own thing. And, it's gonna I'll, I'll tell everybody that I'm gonna Right. I'm gonna I'll tweak tell everybody it for that. you, baby. He kept, he, dude, he kept cracking jokes. This was at like a Comic Con panel this year. And he kept cracking jokes. He's like, Oh yeah, in the new season, uh, we're gonna kill He Man again, and then everybody's gonna be Tila. It's like he kept cracking jokes about the very thing that he fucked up on. And that that was making me angry. I was like, "Yeah, that you that's how you fucked up. You focused on Tila. You and you you could tell Tila stories." Well, that's why he that's why he's cracking jokes cuz he knows he's he knows he's yeah, fucked up. He so fucked annoying. up. He's insecure about it. But the overall tone Does he I, have you children? Know, Does he have children? Yeah, he's got a yeah. daughter. Just Harley. a daughter? Yeah. Ah. Her name's her name's Harley Quinn. Um That makes sense. But uh he uh Oh, the the tone of it though, Matt, like and the the actual writing, like when, once you get past the fact that he's that he man's not in his own show, I liked the character development for the most part. I liked the conversations, uh, and I just wished, you know, he's like, oh, we need to explore Tila. It's like, really, you don't want to, you don't want to take the time to explore a, a teenager who has to spend his whole life pretending to be a fucking coward and saving everyone's fucking ass. Like that's that's worth exploring to me. Like that that that's interesting. Like if you want to get into a more mature type subject matter imagine the the toll that would take on a teenager where everybody's like you know tila and everybody's just like you fucking pussy ass bitch you always just run away every time there's fucking conflict you know what i mean like it, the the ridicule he must endure and to still have that type of character is 
that's worth exploring. That's some well, they, Superman shit. That's they some kinda, Captain America shit. They pointed it out. They're like, it takes it takes more strength to give the power up than it does to Yeah, they pointed it out yeah. and they didn't explore it at all. No. They just talked about how hard how hard it was for Tila to live in a palace her whole fucking life. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Like <laughs> you lived in a goddamn palace. What are you talking about? Yeah, they Shut did up. they did do that Captain America shit. They were like, you know, a weak man knows you know, the importance of, of strength, you know? Right. Right. And that's what they should have explored though. That's much more interesting to me than, than Tila's story. Cause Tila's story wasn't interesting. It, it honestly wasn't. That was the weakest part of it. I thought and, the, where I thought the part where Orko is bearing his soul to evil Lynn was a little too much for me. <laughs> he was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. But it, but other than that, you know, I mean, I, I agree. I thought it was good. I thought it was just a little like, what? Why is he burying his soul to his fucking uh, nemesis? <laughs> you know, right? It's like, my wife but, watched it. She liked it. Okay. I don't she, know if she watched He Man growing up, but of course, like what? I told Sean, I I've been watching episodes of The Love Boat for two weeks every night, <laughs> and it was so refreshing to watch anything. <laughs> Tom's like four out of four. Ten like, out of ten. Compared uh, to this. <laughs> oh. Well, that's the thing. So you guys don't have the history with it. Like, how do you look at it just objectively as a story? It was okay, yeah. but I... sorry, Steve. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I am. Uh, <laughs> you always do. I watched the fr- I I watched the first five when you were you suggested it, not yeah. assigned it as homework, and right. I was like, where the hell is he, man? Man, I was like. <laughs> So um, even as like a non fan, you were still like, "Where's the guy?" Yeah, I mean, I recognize like Merman. I di- I didn't know too much. Uh, I like Ram Man. I remember because I remember that toy. Um, yeah. But uh, you know the uh, Prancer, whatever the hell Beast. What's his name? <laughs> Beast what's Man. No. Oh yeah, I remember him. Oh, Cringer. You talking about Cringer? Cringer. Yeah, Cringer. Uh, but. Yeah, I was like, what What are they doing here, man? I was like, this is all about Tila. Dude, I'm with Rob. I'm like, where? Because I forgot I had watched part two, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I was like, all yeah. right. I remember Sean saying there wasn't much He-Man. The- so th- then I went to watch part two, and I was like, there'll be He-Man here. <laughs> <laughs> they, and then, surely and there'll and be then He-Man each, in your each, He-Man show. Each yeah. episode I watched in part two, I'm like, oh, my God. I, I'm so- I remember all this, you know? And I'm like, I've already watched this. And then at the very end, I remember everything like um, Tila saying, you know, it's about family. That's what gives me true power, stuff like that. Family. And and all I could think of, I I think I told you this last time I watched part two, but forgot. I was like, all I could think about was Buffy. That was that was the main theme in Buffy. Like my friends and family make me stronger, you know, and I'm like, and, and then it was, of course, it was voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar. So I'm like, all I could think about was Buffy the whole time. Like they're, we're doing Buffy again, but but I yeah, mean, the, the storytelling was 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 decent, and yeah. I mean the dialogue was. I mean it wasn't just stupid, but you know yeah. they they throw in some corny, you know, like the old oh, TV yeah. show. They throw in which was good because it made you you know it was like ah cheese. I like it. You know, some of that was disrespectful, man. They didn't they didn't make have to have yeah. Fisto doing fucking fisted lines. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! He's like <laughs> I want to. I forgot about it. I was going to write that. I was like, I got to remember. What Dude, he, he, said. he said, he's like, I really want to fist that guy. And he was talking yeah, about Skeletor. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, holy it. fuck. What? Yeah, that was intense. That was so intentional. And it was so cringy. Not not a reference to Cringer. Right. But it was so cringy, though. Right. And every time I rewatch it, I'm just like, God damn it. That <laughs> just don't. You, it's clear you don't like this shit. It's clear you don't like this material. That wasn't as bad as Come On Barbie, Let's Go Party. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, I think it was worse than Come On Barbie, Let's Go Party. No, I'll take that anytime. I want to fist that guy. (laughs) (laughs) I've been dying to fist this guy. Dude, when Evil Lynn wipes out heaven, that was hilarious, man. I was laughing my ass off. I was like, oh, (laughs) shit, they're all dead. You have no preternia. That was great. And and, yeah. and that, that scene where Roboto forges the swords, that was dope, dude. I like that. That was cool. That was very cool. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right, so overall, like out of out of ten, what do you what do you give this these ten episodes out of ten? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Okay. Seven. 
Yeah, I mean, it was, it was okay. Yeah, I, 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 if you get if like if you get over the fact that there's no He Man, I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, if you break it down without that, it's probably a seven. If if okay. you're a, I'm not a diehard He Man fan. I know a little bit about it, so I mean, I really don't care either way. But I mean, but I watched it with my him, though, wife, right? which was enjoyable. So yeah. you know, she don't, you know, watch stupid shit like this with me. So that was nice. Yeah. So I it, did, it probably raised the bar a little bit. I don't know. I mean, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it. it. I'm horrible. Proud. I'm going to throw about yeah. seven. Easy seven. Okay. I, I had a lot of fun with it. But I yeah, I, even not being a He-Man fan, like you, kn- there wasn't much He-Man at all. It was crazy. Yeah. I was like. So, okay. So yeah, even I, I love that that was still an issue for you guys. Cause it should be, it should be an issue when you, you know, you're watching something and you're like, I thought this was about He-Man. That was the, <laughs> the guy. He was the guy, right? Hey man, before, uh, before I forget those, those, uh, floating discs, they were in the live action movie, weren't they? Yeah. Okay. And it, when, so was that a thing in He Man, the cartoon? They would float oh, yes. around on these discs all the time. They had um, the discs. Okay. Um, and they had I think, thrusters. I don't remember in them them using like them in combat, though. I don't think. I feel like they were more used, like you know, almost fun. like a skateboard. They yeah. had like actual, uh, you know, like vehicles for battle. <laughs> I don't remember them being used in battle, but they, you know, they fly them around like a turnos or whatever and stuff. Okay, uh, but I don't remember them being any type of you know used in in the in the live action movie they were used in battle. Yeah, I, I was like, I'm pretty sure I saw those in that live action. That, movie. I, that was a budget thing. I'm pretty sure it's like, well, it's a lot easier to just you know put him on a rig and he looks like he's on a hoverboard than it is to put him <laughs> in a fucking attack track or whatever. Um, yeah. What, so, what do you yeah, think? Your of- scores are your scores are valid because I can, I go back and forth like because I can get into it. I again. It's nice to see a He-Man aimed at someone at my age, which makes sense because I was the target audience 40 years ago. So it's nice to see something aimed at older adults. Um, however, that that lack of He-Man just, dude, like it brings it down to like a four out of 10 for me. because like you don't have He-Man in your He-Man. I made a meme, I remember. I think I sent it to you guys. But there's a scene in the original Jurassic Park where uh, Malcolm... Uh, Ian Malcolm, the uh, Jeff Goldblum character, says uh, he looks into a camera, a security camera that John Hammond is watching. And he says, uh, you do uh, you do plan to have uh, dinosaurs in your dinosaur park, huh? Right. And like, that's all I could think is like, you, you do plan to have He-Man in your He-Man show, right? And and no, <laughs> the answer is no. I can't believe <laughs> I can't believe there wasn't shit in part two. <laughs> like, like, I mean, they they killed him at the end of episode five, right? They they stabbed him. Well, they stabbed him. Yeah, he right. Didn't die. Right. And then you know they heal him pretty quick in the next episode. Right. So I was like, okay, here we go. You know. And, right. And like you said, it wasn't till maybe episode ten or late in episode right. nine where he finally gets the power. And then as soon as he gets the power, and you see him in Battle Cat, they're like. Back to Tila. <laughs> right, right. All of a sudden, it's about Tila and Evil Lynn, and you're like, I'll kill everybody on this, on this show. I swear to fucking God. I don't care about this. It's not what He-Man is about. Yeah. It's not about magic battles between sorcerers. It's yeah. about fucking swords and shields and shit. I Lasers. Saw, I saw him and Battle Cat for like 12 seconds. I was like... Yeah. But but I ain't gonna lie, man. Like I don't even remember watching He-Man that much, but like when he got it back and he was on Battle Cat, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, yeah, that was awesome. I mean, it was exciting. I didn't get chills, but I was I was more like about goddamn time. You know, it was just like that's why I was asking you. I was like, was that was that? Did that give you goosebumps? You know, because because no, I was just angry at that point. It was like, it, no, now now we get him. You know what I mean? Like, we, like you know, he's not dessert. He's the star of the fucking show. You know, like, what are you doing? Yeah, well, so, I, like, I mean, I hate watching the Browns every week, but when they went to the playoffs <laughs> a couple years ago, I was like, playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it brought me so much joy, you know. And so they I, I won it. That... They beat the Steelers. Yeah, but it... yeah, the the last I liked the last episode a lot. Again, aside from the the Tila Evil Lynn drama shit, um, I just love the two that Tila's like. I know you've been bound to this castle, but. I don't think I'm going to be like, what? that's not how rules work. <laughs> like you're telling me she just stayed there. Cause 
<laughs> she didn't want to break some arbit- some rule that had no consequences. Like, yeah. how does that work? Where you're just like, no, I'm going to leave the castle, and I don't even have to be a bird to do it. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Like, uh, yeah. what? How? She just, Why? She just <laughs> told all these like transcendental forces, like, no, <laughs> right? She's like, I'm gonna do what I want. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? what? I mean, you made the sorceress look like a fucking chump. <laughs> She's like, I could have just left. Fuck. I've been sending this bird out to do all my grocery shopping and shit. Like, <laughs> the sorceress was like, I definitely wouldn't be dead if I knew that. <laughs> Maybe right. I ha- wouldn't have this fucking vitamin D deficiency. I gave up my daughter for nothing. That's what I thought out of it. I was like, Ooh. right? Yeah. I was like, she could have just left. <laughs> right i thought yeah. she hung out with your daughter every day i thought she was gonna denounce it and i was like okay you go and then they yeah. gave her the power anyway i was like oh well okay. of course yeah they're she's like no explanation why that worked she's like well she chose to but yeah it definitely is uh kevin smith catering to that agenda he had a lot of guilt over the fact that clerks was produced by harvey weinstein um and this, he had so much guilt that he literally he, he stated that any money he makes off of clerks from now on, he's going to give all the profits to like women's groups and stuff, which I think is insane. It's like, dude, you didn't know you, you got your first movie produced by Harvey Weinstein. It, it, Harvey Weinstein is not your fault. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's too much. And I feel like him being like, well, it's got to be we got to have all women. They got to be all strong and, and you got to be stronger than the men. And it's it's like almost like reaction to all that. Um, where he's because he, he did kind of the same thing with the, the Jay and Silent Bob sequel. It was just, you know, it was all about strong chicks all the time. It's like, Jesus Christ, like you, you don't need to fucking cater to a political agenda that doesn't fucking matter that started on Twitter. And it's like nine actual people who give a fuck about it. Just make good stories. Are you sure like, he's I, doing I that? Just to, as offended. Are you if, sure if they took She Ra? What? Are you sure he's doing that just to cater to, or is that just how yes. he it's absolute placation. That's all it is. Um, he felt bad. He poly- He made apologies for chasing Amy in the Bo- Jay and Silent Bob movie because he-, he made a miss. You know, uh, he-, he didn't write lesbians that well or something. I'm like, God, shut the fuck up, dude. You did. Your work is of its time. We progressed since then, but and we learn and things are different now. But you don't apologize. I mean, it'd be one thing if you made some horribly racist Nazi shit. You know what I mean? Like, it came from a good place. It came from a good-hearted place. He wasn't trying to drag anybody. And now he, he has all this this guilt over all this bullshit that has nothing to do with him. And it's, it's just, like I said, if I was a She-Ra fan and I went to watch She-Ra and they just killed She-Ra and instead followed Bo around, I'd be like, where where is She-Ra? I tuned in for she You know what I mean? It's the same reaction. It, it's not about... Because he, he tried to say, it's oh, it's all misogynist. Like, no, it's, motherf- it's He-Man fans wanting to watch He-Man. That's it. <laughs> yes, there's a small pocket of them that are just misogynist. The rest of us are just like, I want He-Man in my He-Man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, that's it's there's there's no political thing there. We just want He-Man in the He-Man show. Bro, that's simple. It said Masters of the Universe. Right. And that's on. no excuse. Because he was sequelizing then, a show called then He-Man. And the they Masters give the, the, the girl Man of Arms, and they still call her Man of Arms. Right. <laughs> that's some sexist that's title, shit. That's t- <laughs> they need to change that title. He should Why feel guilty. Why couldn't she be Woman of Arms? <laughs> God, you know what would be hilarious if it's the, the next one is all about her? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, okay, that's it. Come on, snipers. <clears throat> but yeah, it's... It's so weird because I really do feel two ways about it. It's it's actually strongly written. It's well written. But again, when you take the main, you know, the star of the series out, it's it's just automatically loses so many points. It doesn't matter how you, you can't recover from that. When people have been waiting 40 years, you know, <laughs> and that's the first thing you do. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, obviously, after all the shit he got, I'm surprised they gave him a part, you know, another one. Well, it must have been viewed a lot. And I, idiots like me watched it more than once. Yeah. Well, just happy to have more He-Man in our lives. Um, and most, but I have two friends who are hardcore He-Man fans. Uh, you know, Keith mm-hmm. and my other friend, Mark. They, after the first episode, they turned it off. Like they couldn't watch it anymore as He-Man fans because they're just like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Or maybe it was the second episode. I don't know. But they, they didn't get far into it where they were just like, this is bullshit. And they were right. I can't even like, 
they're, they're right. They're, was they're that, right to be angry. Was that due to their misogyny? or <laughs> Right. <laughs> Apparently they're just misogynists. <laughs> they can't just be He-Man fans. No, they're just misogynists. <laughs> But like I said, it's the same. No matter what, imagine, imagine you go to watch the new Batman movie. They call it Batman. The rest of the movie is about Alfred, and then Batman shows up for like the last eight minutes or whatever. Like I don't want to watch an Alfred movie. I don't want to watch a Robin movie or whatever the fuck. I want to watch a Batman movie. You know, like it, it's it's very simple. I hear you. These are all valid complaints. Ah, but I'm glad you. I'm glad to get some outsider perspective. For instance, you guys weren't passionate about the franchise, so therefore you were able to get through all ten episodes. Unlike my friends who are just like, fuck this, fuck you. I'm not doing this shit. I got You're not him. monopolizing my time. I got through them twice. <laughs> twice? <laughs> yeah, I thought I had only got through the first part once, but I watched it all. Ah, so disappointing. Uh, sorry. Nothing Dude, but we're... disappointment for our listeners. <laughs> well, I... I'm sure there's a lot of people that did like it, you know. Is there anything yeah. you're watching, Steve, or that you uh, did like? Uh, Avengers, dude. We're up to uh, the Avengers on the family MCU watch nice. list. You do like your Avengers, don't dude, you? Dude, I mean, I've told you guys, like, when we did that, you know, Final Four MCU draft or whatever, Avengers yeah. was my favorite, and it is still it my holds favorite. up, huh? Dude, they do such a good job, like, with the care, like, you know, the characters, they stay true to each character within, you know, certain situations between those characters. Mm. Like they, they stay true to each one. Like that scene when uh, Bruce Banner has the staff and they're all getting heated with, with each other. And you see each person, each character's personality just shining through, you know, they stayed so true. They had a masterful job at that throughout that whole movie. Plus, it just, it was so much fun, man. And the action was great. Dude, when, when Tony jumps out of the window, you know, and he's in that suit comes and, and follows him and gets him in midair. Oh, man, that shit was so fun. Dude, plus, good. just, you know, we, we had had, what, like three or four movies before that. And, and so there was like that build up. You had the little teasers at the end. Um, so there was like, th- there was that excitement. And... And then seeing it all come together really the 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 weakest part of that movie is the beginning. It just doesn't start off strong. Yeah. Uh but it I it's almost they almost should have started with that scene with Loki uh when he's at um uh Tower City. Yeah. And like Loki in the back of that truck looks so stupid when he's leaving. <laughs> yeah. You know? But just like, that whole scene, like I understand it was, you know, for exposition or whatever, but it just it wasn't a great start. But yeah, it, I wish it had been when Loki was at Tower City. And um and cap and they all start showing up. That would have been a really cool opening scene. Um and then we could have got the explanation later. I just but. read an article you talked about the shorts. And I just yeah. read an article about uh somebody was saying that that really helped, you know, they've done away with those and it kind of helped connect and like get you interested in some of the other characters, you know, like Phil Colson. Yeah. We got to see him. And then obviously uh Peggy Carter her short was fantastic and then it led into the the tv Agent series Carter. yeah, yeah. Those oh. show, not much happened in those shorts though like nothing was no, that no, they, well they, that, they didn't want to do anything that was necessary right, right. The there's story. nothing like revealing like, you get to see like a kick-ass no, fight, fight scene but, with phil colson but it was always secondary characters it was it kind of yeah. like made you want to you know kind of told you a little bit about them you know yeah I mean, just there were so many little jokes that were hilarious, you know, like when Loki tries to put the scepter on Tony, he's like, you know, one out of five men have problems or something like that. Yeah, just little stuff like that, dude. Dude, when Hulk fucking tosses Loki like a rag doll, (laughs) that never fucking gets old, man. It is so great. So what did did Dom think? The kids kids were laughing their ass off. Everybody was a fan of the Hulk at the end when he snatches Tony up right before he hits the ground, you know, yeah. Uh, the kids, the kids loved it, you know, and it it was just, I mean, it's, it's one of the greatest movies in my opinion, you know, just seeing them all together for the first time and that fight scene, how they, the final battle, how they go, the the camera will just follow a different person, you know, like you'll see, you'll see, you know, uh, Hawkeye jumping off 
and then it'll switch to somebody else who's in the background and just follow them instead. One continuous shot. It was it was great, man, and it was epic. It was the freaking aliens invading the Earth. Like yeah. you can't get any bigger than that. What one thing I it was a big reference for me too when everybody saw Man of Steel the following year. And I was just like, hey, remember in Avengers when New York was under attack and they prioritized saving people? Do you remember that? Right. And that was kind of something that was hugely missing <laughs> yeah, that's why, from the Superman movie. <laughs> that's why I, I that's why I said like everybody's character, everyone stayed true to the character. You know, like Caps, like you got you gotta get these people out, get them down to the subway or something like that. And right. uh, it was all about protecting the citizens, you know? And I'd like that and I mean it sounds basic, but then you see Man of Steel and you're like, oh wow, Superman just committed genocide. That's weird. That's out of character for Superman. I didn't know that's something he was into. He just wiped out Metropolis. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, and then people are like, Snyder, Zack Snyder knows what the fuck he's doing. It's like, Zach, oh, he doesn't know anything. Like five more movies. <laughs> And right. You get Black Widow in the beginning in that interrogation scene. That oh, was great. great. Like she's just playing him the whole time, you know? Yeah. You get see you, Joss Whedon. Now that's a dude who writes strong female characters and doesn't make them into cunts, you know? But, but evidently I mean, you know I mean? he's a dick to females. <laughs> eh, I, I haven't heard no, enough I mean, on real, that. Yeah. No, I, I but I, other than Charisma Carpenter, and you know why I don't trust her? Because she's a fucking Christian. I don't trust Christians. I don't. <laughs> she she's a Christian. He's an atheist. I I trust him on that one. Christians are liars. They have no moral character. They just go to church and pray and think everything's forgiven. I don't trust her. I don't, she's the only female I've heard come out speak out against him that I, that I know of. I'm not saying she is the only one. She's the only one that I've read about, and so I don't trust her. I, I thought haven't heard uh, Michelle Geller or Jewel State or anybody else come out and say anything against Joss Whedon. And I don't know what their reasons are. They might have stories and they just don't want to share them. And that that's possible too. I'm not trying to diminish uh, their experience. Well, I'm not, and, I'm not putting privacy. him in the same thing as Weinstein. I'm just saying. No, no, no. But yeah, but yeah. What, what I'm saying though, is like you had the one dude uh, who uh, <coughs> played cyborg starting shit. Um, I think Gal, maybe Gal Gadot said something about it too. I was going to say, I either. thought Gal said something too. I, I just, I, she's just, I don't like she she also lied about James Gunn telling her she's going to work on Wonder Woman 3. I, she's not reliable. Don't I don't trust it. Um but uh yes, yeah, so, but yeah, his his career apparently he's not allowed to do anything anymore because he was mean to people a little bit, which is crazy. If you've ever watched a the behind the scenes video <laughs> of David O Russell on the set of I Heart Huckabees and the shit he says to Lily Tomlin, Google that shit and then you're like what what did jo- Joss Whedon do that was worse than this? That is, watch that. David O. Russell, Lily Tomlin, I Heart Huckabees. Holy fucking shit. Holy I already shit. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to see it. I didn't it's, even know also, about it, so this will be interesting. Oh, my God. It's it's years old. I mean, it's, you know, it's from I Heart Huckabees era. But, yeah, somebody recorded him on set, and he's just literally telling Lily Tomlin what a cunt she is. Like, he's just screaming it at her. <laughs> like, how stupid she is. And, and like, what? is happening that dude's still making movies I'm like, do we have video evidence <laughs> like these aren't claims we have video <laughs> evidence of this happening and that dude's still making movies i that, I, I don't get it i that, don't get it that's I don't funny too because it's not like it's lily tomlin's first role <laughs> right? yeah. she, like she's like well regarded you know what i mean well respected actor at this point you know years and years into her career and somehow i guess because this was pre me too or whatever yeah, somehow he he got away with it. He's fine. Joss Whedon's fucked somehow, though. Even though he's written some of the best female roles in movies and television, dude. That all is true. Dude, all his stuff, like the Age of Ultron, had so many small lines that just were so good and so memorable. Yeah. You know, it yeah. just man, I I can't, that movie was so freaking good. And I, Sean's gonna love this. The aspect ratio filled my whole screen, man. <laughs> like it was, yeah. it was a complete movie. It feels experience. epic. It feels more epic, right? Yeah, it especially your screen. It feels bigger. Yeah, that Battle of New York was amazing, man. That's why I don't get when they're like, "Oh, if we do it, you know, if we do it wider and shorter, it's more epic." No, screen filling is epic. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? When the screen is filled, it feels epic. You know what Dom, Dom was saying when we were watching. He thought that this movie was the end of Endgame. 
that he was watching oh, okay. last time. And he's okay. like, Dad, I've seen this. I know what happens, Dad. I was like, and I knew. I was like, you're thinking of the wrong movie, bro. Because he kept, he's like, hey, Dad, spider Man's going to come in soon. I was like. <laughs> Is he now? I was like, you don't know shit, son. I didn't say that, too. <laughs> but I was like, you ain't, you ain't seen none of this. Did you pull a David or Russell and be like, you dumb bastard. <laughs> you you dumb. don't know a fucking thing. You, <laughs> you don't know shit, cunt. son. Shut the fuck up and watch this. No, but man, it, he 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 loved it. Brooklyn loved it. I, I Chris and I even think liked it. So, I mean, no. that's just it's just a great all around movie. And then the swarm is that, is that where you left off? Is that the last one you watched? Yeah, the swarm scene at the end. I'm, I made everybody stick around to see swarma. <laughs> uh, dude, I got to tell you about this uh, this video game I've been playing called Starfield. Uh, it is. It is a first-person role-playing game uh, slash shooter. It's made by a company called Bethesda. And Bethesda is a popular video game uh, developer. They have a series called Elder Scrolls and a series uh, called Fallout. They didn't create Fallout. They bought the license. But with Fallout 3, it's been theirs. And um, they've always made like these very epic role-playing games. And um, so Elder Scrolls is set in like fantasy, Lord of the Rings type thing. Fallout is set in like this alternate history where like nuclear war happened and we soldiered on, but you know, everything is, you know, devastated, decimated. And so, but, and so there's all this kind of like sixties version of the future where it's like, um, you know, like the danger will robot Robinson type robots running around and stuff, but you know, just it's, it's, it's like, it, like I said, it's like an alternate history thing. Very fun though. Um, I, pl- I played fallout on the PS three. I forget. Oh, did you? Which, okay. I forget which one it was. It was Fallout Three, probably. Yeah, it was, Fallout, it was the only one that came out on PS3. Yeah, and that was um, that was a lot. Well, of that's fun. not true. New Vegas did come out, but you probably played Fallout Three. Um, but uh, so you know, it, and then they've had sequels to those games. Skyrim. A lot of people know Skyrim was uh, the Elder Scrolls Five game, a huge, hugely popular game, and th- they've been working on this game for at least the past eight years, and it's called Starfield. Yeah, so ahead. basically, you got. You got a alternate history game. You got a fantasy setting, and now this is a, a sci-fi futuristic setting. And you get a spaceship, and you travel the galaxy, and you travel to other galaxies. And it's mostly it's a lot of it is conversation. It really is. That's what all the games are because they're role playing games. It's a lot of decision making. I know I texted you about it. and I said this is like Star Trek. It's kind of like Star Trek, but you know what? It, it even more reminds me of is fucking Firefly because you, you're you're flying a cargo ship. Uh, not unlike Serenity or the Millennium Falcon, you're not f- flying some X-wing around or whatever. Um, and you can engage with pirates, you can engage with soldiers, you can engage with just everyday people, civilians. Uh, and it's a lot of decision making. Uh, it's a lot of combat. Uh, the dialogue is great. The combat is is probably the best gunplay that Bethesda's ever had in the game. But yeah, you f- at, at one point I was like, dude, this reminds me of fucking Firefly. Because you got this freighter, you can choose to smuggle contraband if you want to make money, and that has its own risk. Because certain planets, when you get into their atmosphere, they'll scan your ship, and if you have contraband, they will board your ship, and you will make the sit. It's open world, so you can literally, you can decide, I'm going to murder every person on this planet if you want. Now everybody's going to come after you. It's going to be hard, but you can do it, um, and they will stay dead. Um, do you, do, when when you, when you get situations like that in a game, do you do the good thing or do you do the bad thing? I, you know what I do? I, I do something called save scumming, which is you could save your game at almost any point. So if I think, if I suspect something's about to happen or I know something's about to happen, I will quickly save my game and I will play out the scenario. If I don't like it, I will reload my save. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes I will just be like, I, so I, stealing is always an option. You could pick up almost everything in the game. Like if you walk into somebody's office, Everything might, but if it's it's somewhere that you are an ally with, then you can pick, you can take stuff and add it to your inventory. It's fine. If it has a little red mark on it, then it's considered stealing. So if I wanted, I could be like, I'm going to take this tape dispenser. I'm going to take this mouse. I'm going to take this flashlight. Whatever. I'm going to take this coffee mug. And if nobody sees you do it, then nobody will confront you. So I was in a room and normally I don't steal, but I was like, dude, I broke, I had to break into this room for a site for a quest. And there was all this good gear around guns and shit and it was thieving. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, anybody going to see that? Nobody's going to see it. All right. And I steal all this shit. I walk out. There's a security guard right there. I walk up to her. I stare at her. All right. Nothing. 
I, I walk like 30 more paces. All of a sudden, an alarm goes off. They start chasing. And I'm furious because this bitch has the nerve to chase me. Like, I just saw you. You didn't see shit. So I just start murdering people. And then I reloaded my safe. But I just, and the, the guards are really hard to kill, though, especially when you're low level. But uh, I just started killing people because it's fun. And then I'm like, all right. Reload the save. I don't want that. I don't want that on my permanent record. Okay, so um, I, I need to save more frequently, is what you're saying, because I play Bioshock like three times, and I cannot kill the little sisters every time. Like I just can't yeah. do it. Like I always say, I did it once. I did it once on a playthrough. I killed one little sister just to see what it looked like, and I felt so bad. <laughs> and I saved beforehand because I was like, I don't want that on my permanent record. Right. I couldn't do it. I could never do it. Yeah, I can't like, do it. <laughs> and I did it like on a, I did it on like a fifth playthrough, like five years later. I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fuck killing these little sisters. <laughs> and I finally did it. And I felt terrible about kill, killing this virtual little girl. I was like, I'll just go on YouTube and see what other horrible people have done. A better, a better option. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this game is crazy though. Cause there are morality choices and they're not always obvious. The, the best choice isn't always obvious. Sometimes there isn't a best choice. Um, you have companions. Uh, it's And it's huge. It's a huge game. Um, Wait, why are so you many, saying this? I, why are you telling me this? I need to get this because it's like Firefly. Is that what you're saying? This is I like, think you would love it. I think you would absolutely love it. It's, a pitch it, it's not a me. pitch. I don't get any. This is not sponsored content. I'm just sharing something I love. I'm sharing it with the listener if they're on the fence about it. Uh, if you like Bethesda games, if you like Western RPGs, I'm having a. I haven't had this much fun with the game since Super Mario Odyssey. Probably was like the last game where I had, I felt like this much joy while playing it. Basically, yeah. So, and this is one that keeps going or has an end. It has an end, but there's so many quests and there's so many planets to explore. You could probably play it for hundreds of hours. Nice. Um, I don't know. I'm only like 20 hours into it. I but I. I've done two main quests in that 20 hours. <laughs> That's it. I did. I've done two quests on the main quest line. I've just been fucking off doing whatever the hell I want. Dude, they sent me after somebody. Uh, they wanted me to go get this war criminal and I had to engage him in a like ship to ship battle. And again, you're fine. You're, you're flying a cargo ship. It's not some nimble little, you know, fighter. And I'm trying to, di- to be suave and disable his engines just target his engines because if you disable their engines, you could board their ship. And I wanted to take them alive because I thought there might be a better reward. So after like three fucking save loads, I I finally get the ship, the engines disabled, I jump on, and then he hides behind a locked door and fucking kills himself. I'm like, fuck. But then, and there's nothing you can do about it though. So I'm like, okay, so I'm just looking at it. I'm on this ship now. And I'm just like, you can take the ship. It's your ship if you want it. And that could be your ship. It's fucking crazy, dude. Like you could just stay on the ship and have you could have a fleet of ships. And ultimately I didn't take it because I had just gotten this really cool badass ship called the the Razor Leaf. And uh but I was just sitting there and I'm just like, this is my ship now. And you can do that though. Like you can come across civilians, come across pirates, and you can steal their fucking ships if you want. That's fucking nuts. Has any of your cargo ever been cattle? (laughs) (laughs) No, not not yet. (laughs) Okay. It's, it's not unlikely though. There's it, dude, there's a lot of references to a lot of sci-fi out there. So I would not be surprised if I came across some Firefly references. Okay. There's a whole actually there is a fire the, there's a whole faction called like the Free the Free Star Collective. It's basically they they wear cowboy hats, they all have southern drawls and they they are the brown coats basically. Nice. And you could join that collective if you want. They're they're all about, you know, a free frontier and stuff like that. They don't want to be a part of the the collective or whatever. Um, so that was the other thing. I just got to that on that quest today, and I was like, dude, this is this is just like fucking Firefly, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I would great like, game though. I, I think I would like to play that. That sounds what what did you say it was on? Uh, it's out for PC and it's out for the Xbox Series X. Oh, so well, you need to I buy don't. a whole system. Okay. <laughs> well, that, there goes that. Tell me how it was. <laughs> Tra- trade in your Xbox. Get a Series X. You'll, but, you won't regret it. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to save money for the Neo statue. Get the Okay, get the Neo. The Neo, you could play this later. Get the Neo. L- Logan literally bought an Xbox just to play this game, and he's, he's loving it just as much as I am. How much is an Xbox now? Uh, 500 Damn. I thought that shit would have come down by now. That's half a Neo. <laughs> that's half a, of a neo that's half that's a, a bottom neo. half of a neo <laughs> uh, i got priorities 
but yeah, he literally, he, and it's funny because he wasn't going to, but he loves Bethesda games. This is the kid. I let him stay home from school on November 11th of 2011, because that was the release date for Skyrim. He was so excited. I was like, yeah, you can stay home. That's awesome. And so he just, so he could play Skyrim and he played it for like two months straight. Like he got so much, he loved that game. He never went back to school. Two (laughs) two months straight. He he dropped out. (laughs) No, he was just so stoked. I was like, yeah, you can stay home. Fuck that. Have fun, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. He he was so, cause he had played Oblivion before that, which is the previous Elder Scrolls game. Um, and he was just so psyched. Uh, Yes, but it, again, for listeners too, it's, it's dude having a blast. Logan bought a system. He was thinking about upgrading his computer to play it. I was gonna say, any any PC guy? He has a PC. He's not hardcore like Aiden and Mason though. He he's more like me, where he he'll play on whatever. Um, you don't have to go was, PC unless you're really dedicated, right? Like, there's no reason for me to. You play don't have it. to go PC unless you want to. There's no requirement to play anything. That's you can I, own one it, system. You can own five why, systems. Why is everybody going to? It's better, right? Like you're, you're it quicker. It can be if you're willing, if you're willing to invest in it, there's a cost. So if you put together a PC that is as powerful as a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, those systems being $500. If you put together a PC that can do what those can, About and not any better. Bucks. Yeah. You're, you're looking at at least a thousand dollars. So it's, it, but you're getting other benefits, but I don't care about those benefits. I'm not into modding. I don't really like mouse and keyboard controls. I prefer a controller. Like I, for me, consoles where it's at, but it it's yes. If you, if you have the budget, you can make a $20,000 PC, you know, I just can't picture myself sitting at a fucking desk. I don't like that either. That's another thing. I don't like, eh, I'm playing a game. (laughs) Like I hate it. I hate playing games on my PC. I used to have my PC hooked up to my TV and I had a lap board, a wireless uh, keyboard and mouse set up. And I didn't even like that. I still just wanted to use a controller. Um, yeah, I want to sit in the recliner and fucking just go right. to town. It, to me, it's a relaxing thing. I just, it's not the preferred way to play for me. Uh, and again, some people, Mason loves it. Aiden loves it. I, I'd i rather play on a, on a console and a TV. That's just so a, fun. We're just old now. Like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we didn't grow up because, well, you're like that, that kind of uh, millennial uh, what do they call that? A zenial? I'm on the cusp. I'm on the cusp. Yeah. You're like a Gen X. Yeah. You're a zenial, I think. So, and I'm like only a few years older than you, but I grew up poor, so I didn't get PC. <laughs> you, and you grew up like slightly before PCs were the norm before, you know, they came down in price. Yeah. Commodore 64 uh, does not count. It's a little different now. <laughs> right. It's more of a game system, but it was technically a PC. Um, uh, so yeah, we, we kind of, we didn't grow up with playing on keyboards and stuff. We grew up with the NES and the Atari and, you know, dedicated controllers, basically. Yeah, but so that's it, what we're used but to. But I'm like fervently against the keyboard. Like, I don't want change, you know, like even <laughs> even if it would be better. I'm like, right. no, I'm not doing that. That's why I think I'm just yeah. too old now, you know. Yeah. Well, Aiden, Aiden, I mean, yeah. Aiden plays uh, PC games, but he also can plug in his controller if he wants. Yeah. And some games do allow that. Yeah. But if you're going to. The, the downside to that is some games aren't set up for it. I, I forget what game I was playing. My son and sets the, up his controller in so many different ways anyway. Like, yeah, it, and I'm like, not, that's the thing. See, that's the thing. You got to be willing to be fiddly. I don't, I want to plug and play. I don't want to have to download three different fucking modified apps to make this work with this thing. Dude. And I don't want to. And also, if you're going to play online, like if you're going to play against people, you're at a severe disadvantage if you're using a controller versus somebody who's using a mouse. Yeah. They're going to be faster and have more accurate aim. It's just a fact. Dude, Aiden um, got, what was it, Street Fighter or not Street yeah. Fighter? What's, yeah, Street Fighter. And, like, it was the new one. And I was like, oh, cool, I'll watch him play. He fucking was doing demo, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? Practicing. And yeah. setting up his controller, and he go in there, and then do this, and then he play this character, and perfect the moves, and then like, and I was like, Jesus Christ, this ain't no fun watching you play. <laughs> like he did that for like, I think he did that for two weeks before. You know what I mean? It's like Jesus Christ, yeah. they got a lot more patience. You know, like I just want to play. I want Space Invaders, right. man, or you know. Right. I, well, I was thinking, like, anytime I wanted to play like an older game. <clears throat> anything you know that predated basically like 2008 or 2010 
there was always like an issue if I wanted to play with a controller, like it wasn't set up for a controller or it, like I said, you'd move the thumbstick like a hair and your fucking cursor would fly around in a fucking circle and shit. And I was just like, Oh, you just got to download this. You got to No, I just want to plug it in play. I just want it to work. I just want to take, I want to turn it on mm. and I play. I don't want to spend that hour figuring out how to make it play. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play. I guess I could set up, uh, you know, as a, a, a stand or something where I could recline in my recliner and have my mouse to my right or something. Well, no, yeah, like I said, I had a I had a lap board when I used to play on uh, when I my, my PC was hooked to my TV. It's called a lap board. It had it's like a long board that has a keyboard built into it and then a flat surface for your mouse. And it you can get a wired one or a wireless one. And I would do that, and I I didn't like that. It still wasn't really comfortable. Just it's like you had to get in these weird positions. Cause your, your arms are, have to be elevated. It's, it's, you know what I mean? It's just hard. If you're, it's easier to use a mouse keyboard at a desk than it is on a couch. It just it never felt right. My wrist would get cramped up and shit. I was like, I just want to use a controller. So, but I mean, it's obviously faster if you point and click, like you can shoot fast. Yes. Yeah. In a first, in a first at- person shooter. Absolutely. Yeah. Now more- in a single player game, it doesn't really matter. But if you, if you're going to play online, you want, and you want to be competitive, you, you want keyboard and mouse. Single player, you could use a controller. It'll be just fine. <clears throat> it don't matter. I suck anyway, no matter what I play. So just I, get it. Just get an Xbox or a PlayStation. That's yeah. that's my recommendation. Is it, just if yeah, that's what you're it, familiar with, <laughs> nothing wrong with it. By the time I get the new Xbox, the new Xbox <laughs> is going to come out. Right? There's your dude, other. This game is so you. fun though. That that does that <laughs> game does sound fun though. I do want to. It's play fuck, it. dude. Why? Yeah, watch some YouTube videos. It's fucking. It's it's just fun. It's immersive. It's great storytelling. Uh, it's, it's just, it's great. It's great. I love it. And like I said, I, I haven't had, it's been a while since a game has like, it, uh, it was Mario Odyssey before that it was breath of the wild where, where it just sucks me in. And like, I just want to play it. And I'm just like lost in that world when I'm playing it, you know? Yeah. I played a ton of games since then. And like, they've been good. The last star Wars game, it was okay. It wasn't great though. This is a fucking fantastic game. All Good right. shit. Before you pick All next right. next week's comic, have you guys been reading any comics? I know Rob hasn't, but have you guys read anything? I ain't read shit. I've been playing Starfield. Okay. I, re- I read the series called Born Again, Daredevil, Born Again. I, okay. I'm, I'm only, I think I only got two issues left. It's like six or seven issues, I think. And, and it do, you goes, that, do you want to pick the top? Do you want that to be the comic? Uh, no, I just wanted to tell you guys about it, but if you want to it's pick it, my, it's literally on my list as a, as a pick here. So if you want to do that, if you're already reading it, you, you're ahead of the game. Okay. Well, let's do that then. I'll talk. I, I didn't have any, any hard, like, oh, we got to do read this this week. So we could do Daredevil Born Again. That's fine. I'll just save everything till next week then. So what save it? Oh, what you were going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, yeah, save it. Save yeah. it. Hold on to that. And when's the last time you watched the series, the Marvel series? Uh, not too long ago, probably about a year ago. I watched because actually I just watched the second season about it. in in the past year. I watched second season because that's when the Punisher shows up. So I wanted to rewatch all the Punisher shit. Okay. So uh, some some of the themes in this comic uh, go along with the series. So I I'm gonna start rewatching the series this week. Okay. All right. So yeah, Daredevil: Born Again. That'll be on the Marvel app. Uh, you know what issues our- it is? I do not. I think it ends know. at 233, I think. You should be able to do a search for just Marvel Born Again. It should be its own storyline. Uh, how many issues is it? Do you know? It's like six or seven. Oh, okay. That's not it's, bad. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll pr- I have to do a. Rob and I will have to do a little Google research to figure out what, which issues it is, unless you want to send us a shortcut. Yeah, um, he does. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll forget tomorrow what we're even supposed to read. So yeah, Daredevil Born yeah. Again. And then I'll text uh, you Monday night and be like, hey, what are we supposed to read? So yeah, th- this is something too that I feel like I should have read a long time ago. I've never read it. It's uh, it's kind of when Frank Miller made his name be- before getting on Batman and stuff, from what I understand. I think he was initially just doing the art and then he moved into the story telling as well. Um, never actually, I, I started it a handful of times and for whatever reason, just didn't continue reading it. Uh, 
so yeah, this this will be good for me too. This will be an education for me because I never I never read this, and this is a very influential comic, very early eighties. I had Frank no idea. I had no idea it was Frank Miller until I started reading it. I heard some, I heard somebody talking about it, and they really were, you know, all going on about it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll check it out. And then I saw Frank Miller, and what's the other uh, Mazzucati man? David Mazzucelli, I think. Uh, yeah, I think he's uh, with with him on that. Oh, okay. So the guy who did uh, you did the art for Batman Year One. Um, yeah. Hey, so all I, right, very cool. I don't need to buy a ticket. I just buy your ticket that you already got for what Comic Con? Yeah, yeah. All right this this is a post show discussion. Let's wrap this up for the <laughs> listener. All Thank right, here. we'll be back next week. Thank you for listening. Hey, do with comics. Ciao. <laughs> Rob's talking.